Good morning, everybody. 31st of March, 2023. <laughs> but what a crazy day. The news it was yesterday, I guess. I'm just, you know, getting it from this morning. But uh, as usual, I'm in Baranovici. And uh, it was raining all morning. I couldn't go running, jogging. You know, but it, uh, it's actually warmed up. You know, these past days, we had a few days really cold, just like in the winter. It was incredible, like five below zero, you know, very strange. Like last year, we didn't have this. I think by the beginning of March, uh, we started having decent weather. So how things change, you know, one year to the next. <laughs> but I remember being in, when I was in Germany, sometimes we had to wear winter coats in June. So. Otherwise, they'll make sure that they want you to think, you know, to forget about all these things and to say, no, it's it's getting colder because it's getting warmer because of global warming. And of course, that that wasn't working so well. So they changed the name. At first, it was uh, called uh, the greenhouse effect. Everything's getting warmer and all that. And then it was man-made global warming. Then it was just global warming. And now it's called climate change. You know, they keep kind of scaling it down a little bit. Uh, at first, they were just trying to say it's 100%. The weather is 100% man-made, a man fault because of what we are doing and uh, making everything worse in that way. But, uh, you know, in truth, as they're trying to always say, you know, it's CO2, carbon credits, all this kind of crap. And uh, in truth, if you look at the basis of life, on planet Earth, the basis of all life, all life on planet Earth, what is the first thing mentioned? CO2. So you need CO2 and they want to eliminate it. You know, they think that everybody's uh, completely stupid. I don't know if they've uh, gone to the universities and tried to change the formula for photosynthesis or not. Hmm. But uh, it isn't really man made a lot of this climate change stuff. Uh, although there is way too much pollution, you know, we're going to drown in our pollution. It's, a, it's kind of inevitable at some point in time, you know, but they don't talk about pollution. They talk about CO2, you know, <laughs> the basis of life on planet Earth is a very evil thing. And they want to reduce it. <laughs> they don't talk about that the, the Earth's, <laughs> the Earth changes its tilt. And it's like a tilt maybe every who knows how many years, 100 years, 200 years, but the tilt of the Earth changes. And that's, of course, uh, affects the electromagnetism. I remember this when I had uh, uh, climate studies back in the old days. You know, I can go into a lot of things like that, but this is not going to be talking about that. Uh, there's some experts, real experts, not fake people that have been uh, totally indoctrinated into fake science or something like that in the universities lately. Uh, you know, they'll uh, take two things and make some comparisons and find out what the real truth is. And uh, a lot of any sort of changes in climate is nothing, nothing to do with human made, you know, things right now, unless we start blowing off some nuclear bombs. Some people are even talking about that to improve the climate. What in, you know, and Bill Gates, he wanted to spew millions and millions of tons of chemicals into the uh, atmosphere that is toxic to plant life, by the way, and humans. And, uh, but uh, to, reflect the sun's rays back into the atmosphere to cool the planet you know i don't i don't know so what is it going to mean <laughs> i think it's already cold enough but anyway let's forget about that let's talk about some real news stuff that's really going on in these past days just in some incredible incredible stuff you know as you know there <laughs> this manhattan uh, court let's see if, what do i have on here there it's a, uh, about Donald Trump here. It's, uh, yeah, but it's, uh, anyway, this, uh, the Manhattan, what do they call this, uh, uh, district court or something like that. Anyway, they have found Donald Trump guilty. It was a grand jury. Of course, Donald Trump was not allowed to be a participant to speak in his own behalf. And I think there are some attorneys present, but I think in a grand jury, you don't really even get a chance to have a defense. It's more like a sort of a procedure where they tell you that you're a bad guy and that you're going to prison. <laughs> I think that's normally how a grand jury works. You know, at least that's what I've been told. So anyway, 
And anyway, he's, he's, I believe he's still in Florida at this moment. And uh, Ron DeSantis said he's not going to extradite him. First, he said he's not going to get involved. And now he says, I'm not going to extradite him. You know, obviously, these are uh, these lawmakers uh, or these ones that sentenced Donald Trump. Of course, they're George Soros appointments. George Soros uh, funded, you know, and he, I guess he's got them all over America to, to uh, <laughs> so that he's in control of all the laws. You can start to see right now, you know, which is very strange. Who, who is this Dr. Evil? This Dr. Evil in the world that is actually controlling most everything. I was always wondering, I was saying, who's, who's behind all this? I, I knew who was behind all the immigration, you know, sending uh, people from one culture and forcing them onto another country that has a completely different culture. Uh, you know, I knew that was, uh, that was gorgeous George. George was the guy doing all that. But then I wasn't sure, you know, about this woke stuff. Who's, who's behind, you know, and who's the, who's, the, who's the one that came up with all this stuff with this uh, changing your genders and all, all this kind of crap. And, and it makes you wonder how some like guy, 90 years old, who was a boy during the time of, uh, let's just say it's a, a Nazi occupation of Germany. And he was on their side, he was on their side. And, and, and this is all coming, uh, coming about right now. And you remember some of these Hollywood movies where, where they have these closet Nazis, you know, from those old days and showing that they never really were defeated and they're really out there, you know, and that Adolphus is still alive and maybe he's been kept alive, you know, with artificial machines. I don't know, all these kind of crazy, but it looks like some of this, some of this is actually true. You know, this ideology is alive and well. And then it's kind of split into different branches, just like Bandera. You know, he had, um, he had his organization and that split into different, uh, different groups actually. So there were other Nazis, or uh, ooh, Nazis. Oh, I didn't say that. I, oh, YouTube, I didn't say that. Did I say it? No. Anyway, but, but they split into these different groups. And um, like at first, you know, Germany was using that, you know, when it was to their advantage, you know, before. And, and then the, the British were using it. And then, of course, the, the Americans were also using it. But the Americans were not using, like I said, Stefan Banderas, but they were using, they were using some of his, uh, his offshoots. And it seems like it kind of ended for a short period of time. And then um, I remember hearing, I, I knew that it, this was, that it started up at some point in time, and I wasn't exactly sure. I think Scott Ritter was saying that this, uh, this, uh, sort of ended in around 1954 when the U.S. started using this or stopped using this, uh, these adherents. But uh, I, I'm not too sure about that. And of course, they, it was revived again, at least, at least by, obviously much before 2014, because it was in well swing in, uh, if that's the right word. Anyway, it was in full swing, I guess, um, back you know, during those protests at that time in Ukraine. And I think you can even, you can even go back, I think to 2002, you know, when there was some incidences, if there was some expert out there, and I hope, I don't know if there is anybody, but it, this was probably uh, started, makes you think, I think probably in the 1990s. And uh, I don't know, when was the rise of these neocons, which is nothing more than an offshoot of this Bandera thing. And then you have the, another offshoot, which maybe is these neoliberals. And then you see that uh, gorgeous George himself, he's intricately involved in all of these, in all of these things. So I think we all know now who the master of the universe is. <laughs> you know, and, and old Klausy Schwab, we will penetrate the cabinets. I think he is, uh, he's probably just a, a field marshal of old gorgeous George. And you know, a lot of these people, I, 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 um, I don't want to knock the, you know, Jewish people or Jews because that's, that would be unfair, but there, there's a lot of, uh, maybe some on the bad side. And of course, like I say, there's a, there's a bad side of Christianity too, and all religions, Muslims, everything. There's a bad side, but a lot of, you know, for the most part, most all these people, there, there, there's a, at least a good side, if not, uh, uh, the mass, vast majority of, of them being good, but but inside of this ideology, within Judaism, unfortunately, 
there's this, uh, uh, as you know, like a, how do you say, the practice of being the man behind the curtain. So nobody sees, you know, who is actually pulling all the strings. And, uh, and in truth, you know, they are, but uh, they have a front man. And it's just like the United States presidency. Anybody who thinks that Joe Biden is the guy in charge, you know, you really need to have your, your intellect examined, you know. How can some guy who can't find the bathroom at night in the White House be in charge of a whole country? He sometimes forgets his own wife's name. He doesn't hardly even know what state he's in. He shakes hands with invisible people. And the list goes on and on. He talks gibberish that nobody can understand most of the time. So anyhow, if that's not enough evidence, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but they're making a lot of money. He's making a lot of money with Ukraine. So a lot of these people, they're all... They're all involved in this. And uh, you see that they have made, I think it was, uh, was it, uh, I don't know if it was Alexander Makuris or some of these other brilliant analysts, uh, you know, that are talking about how they have made Ukraine, the success or failure of Ukraine, be of an existential threat, you know, to their hegemony. You know, and, and it's like, you know, like Vladimir Putin said himself, you know, this is all, this is all a crisis of their own making. It's just incredible. I wasn't even going to be talking like this, you know. Here I am well into this video, and I'm talking about things that I wasn't even really going to talk about. I was going to talk about some other facts. And let me get to those. So stop, stop steering me away from what I'm really trying to talk about here. See if I can find the path. Look at all these leaves. I think I was here in the snow time, and I could, could see a path, but I, look at this. can go over this way at least maybe as long as it isn't raining but I'm gonna to have to go for cover uh, in some garages where let's see if I can see a well it looks like I can I can go over in that way into the garage area and this is a work day it's still Friday so maybe maybe there won't be that many people there but in, in the meantime I'll walk around in these mucky leaves over here at least I'll see if I can do that so let's talk about the news it's, it's Stop steering me off this subject, people. Okay. Okay, this uh, prosecutor is a uh, Soros-backed Manhattan prosecutor. And I already talked about that. And, uh, you know, this is all about this Stormy Daniels case where uh, uh, Donald Trump paid hush money. So that proves he's guilty. No, it doesn't prove he's guilty. You know, he wanted the story to go away, obviously, because it was in 2016 he's running for the presidency. And, uh, you know, he had enough, enough bad press. You know, he's a Vladimir Putin's agent, you know, and all the other kind of stuff. It actually, you know, when you start looking at this, they're, they are, they're, uh, how do you say that? The frothing at the mouth hatred of Donald Trump shows you that there must be something really good about Donald Trump. A lot of people are starting to realize that. They know these people are just totally corrupt. This is all about them, 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 them. It's not about you, it's not about America, it's not about the world, it's not about justice. It's all about them and their hegemony, their power and their wealth and their comfort, you know? And it's not like they really want to destroy you, but if you are in the way, they want to destroy you, you know, because it's all about them. It's all about them. They don't want to waste the energy to have to destroy you. You know, they, they, uh, they just waste the energy to become more powerful. So, hey, if you want to get rich, you know, if you remember those kind of facts, you know, think about something that doesn't get in their way and, uh, you know, makes you rich and powerful if that's your goal. So, you know, I'm just saying. So, anyway, he paid this hush money, obviously, and, I, uh, you know, just to make the story go away, uh, even if it isn't true, and I don't think it is true, to be honest with you. You know, they've tried so much against Donald Trump. He's like, he's like the, tef, the Teflon, uh, Teflon man, you know, everything kind of runs off of him. And can you imagine if, if they were going after you, they would find something, they can create things. You know, these people, at least Donald Trump had a little bit of money. He could, uh, he could uh, deflect a lot of this, this bad news. And, you know, we can't. So if they come after us, you know, we're toast. You know, look at, uh, I don't know. There's so many people that have done something wrong in their life, you know, so, but those of you that, that don't, like Joe Biden, for example, cast the first stone. You know, that's why, 
You know, like I said, I'm not, I'm not really a religious person, but I love the wisdom of Jesus and the things that he said, at least, uh, you know, the things that, that, that I look at, because I, I start to think about some of the things that, 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 that are from Jesus. And it's like, and it doesn't even, you don't even have to believe in God or anything, but it's just, some of these things are so incredibly intelligent and wise that they, it doesn't matter what time or where, they're, they're true. They're just always true. You know, and even along with what I'm going to be telling you about, it's sort of like, uh, what else, what else did he say? Um, um, there's nothing new under the sun. So all these things, you know, that are going on right now, this, these big movements that I'm going to be talking about, this has all happened before, but in just in different ways. There's nothing new under the sun, you know? And, uh, you look at the United States and, and how they've been, uh, how they've been behaving towards other countries in the world. And then you compare that, for example, to Russia or China, and then you can uh, know them by their fruits. You know, the United States, you do what we tell you to do, and then we may not bomb you. We may not sanction you. That just sounds like a great deal, doesn't it? You know, <laughs> may not. We may not bomb you unless you have something we want, some resources. So you just... Uh, you just give 10% uh, for the big guy, you know, <laughs> whoever that might be at any one given time. It's probably a little bit more than 10%. When you start looking at Ukraine, a lot of these figures have been coming out and this money that was going to Ukraine. And they used to be telling us that like only 30% went to the front, went to the front to the troops and all that. And, uh, and now we're finding out, I think, I think it was coming out that only 20% actually even made it to to Ukraine. And then from that, you know, the big guy in Ukraine, Alensky, you know him, he's taken his cut. Hey, uh, send me money. I want money. Give me some tanks. Give me some tanks. Give me some money. Come exploit my country. I'll give you the Crimea. Oh, oh excuse me. I gave that to the United States already. Uh, come to my country. I'll give you the Donbass. Oh, 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 wait, we're going to, we're, we're poisoning that. We're poisoning that with you depleted uranium. I'll give you Kiev. I'll give you Kiev. Come to my country. I'll move. I got five. No, by the way, 30 houses, 30 homes, 30 homes already around the world. And I'm wanting more. I'm getting more. I'm already up past $2 billion in value. So anyway, let's not talk about that guy anymore. You keep distracting me. So let's, uh, <laughs> let's stop this stuff about Stormy Daniels. You know, I, I'm not really into talking about it porn stars I'm into watching them I, I mean I mean I didn't say that just kidding just kidding just kidding and it might be starting to rain or just drip my notes are getting kind of bad here um gorgeous George so you have to sign on Trump didn't sign on to his agenda so that's one reason why they're going after Trump you know you have to sign on to the to old gorgeous George yeah but we see all of this is becoming unveiled which is really you, you never really thought it would. And you see who, like I said, who Dr. Evil is now in the world, you know? So he and a lot of these things are his instruments, apparently. I, I'm wondering if he is the guy that controls the World Economic Forum. And because, you know, Klaus, he talks like he's the guy in charge, but he just doesn't act like the guy in charge. Uh, you know, even though we're going to penetrate the cabinets. And who's we? Who is we? Yeah, well, maybe maybe we know who the we is right now. And he's, of course, involved, but he's not the big we. The big we, we, the guy on the top. 10% for the big guy. I don't know. You know, you know how that is. But anyhow, Russia has arrested some guy from, uh, from the Wall Street Journal. This is some big news, I guess. You know, it normally wouldn't be big news. And I, I tell you what, I sense a setup. I sense a setup. You know, this was all sort of engineered. This, uh, this guy, what's his name here? His name is uh, Ivan Kershkovich. You know, that sounds like a weird name for some guy from the Wall Street Journal from the United States. Anyway, he was in Russia. He was in the Ekaterinburg area. Ekaterinburg is uh, the biggest area for the military industrial complex, so to speak, of Russia. And um, I've got connections there. Well, kind of, you know, relatives. There's relatives that live there. And, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you talk about employment problems, you know, in so many places of the world. People can't get jobs. But I'll tell you what, you go there and it's, 
you, you probably got to run away from there because there's so many jobs and so much work that everybody everybody's working overtime there. That's that's where they're making a lot of these, uh, you know, bombs and things and tanks and all that, you know, that being used in Ukraine. And it's a massive amount of work there, you know, overtime and who knows what not. I'm just kidding. They're not going to force you into the work over there. You know, and the pay is actually pretty damn good. Weather's not so good. It's far worse than it is here. Uh, I remember they sent pictures when they were here, the uh, people that I know, and they had just left as soon as they got back to Ekaterinburg. And this was in, I think it was early, early September, and there was already snow on the ground. And it might even be one of the areas that I was taught, her hearing about from somebody that, uh, no, that, I'm, I'm sure it's not that area, but there's, but anyway, they have a very, very long winter. So there's nothing, nothing else to do but sit around, sit around in a factory and make weapons. So anyway, you know, that's, that, that's their area. That's where they do it. That's like Lockheed. I, I lived in Seattle and of course that's where they, you know, they have the Lockheed, uh, shipyards and all this sort of stuff. They're making a whole bunch of weapons, Boeing. So that, that's like, uh, it's like the Seattle, Seattle area of, uh, of Russia, I guess I would say, you know, where a lot of the weapons are made. Yes. But anyhow, I, I, like I said, I, I kind of sense that this is a setup and, uh, he was caught red handed, red handed, uh, in espionage. And he's also there inciting Russians to rebel against the to rebel against the Russian government. So he's, he's actually there for two crimes, you know, in, in jail. And uh, <laughs> I, who was it? Let me see. I think I wrote it down here. Uh, Anthony Blinken said he's deeply concerned. He's deeply concerned. He talked about the, the danger posed to U.S. citizens residing or traveling in Russia and that they should depart immediately. And then there's Jean-Pierre. She said the same thing. Get out urging Americans get out of Russia. And then of course they had to walk that back. Um, and that was, who was this joker? It was Jake Sullivan, I believe. He was walking this back and said, oh, we're not actually asking Americans to leave Russia. Now that, you know, because guess what? If, uh, if, they, if they're trying to get all these people out, you know, the ones that are gonna be left are gonna be the spies and Russia's gonna have a lot less work to do by watching all those people. But of course they're not really even doing that either. You know, if they find out somebody's doing some suspicious stuff, you know, that's one thing. They're not, they're not looking at me. They're not, I'm here in Belarus. It's a, you know, oh, and it's so miserable. Well, the weather is a little bit cold right now. I don't know. They said, um, targeting of American citizens by the Russian government is unacceptable. <laughs> you know, I myself, I'm, I'm more concerned about any kind of punishment I get might get from the U.S. government for not jumping on board and going along with all of these hoaxes, you know, with these scare tactics and things like that. So uh, it's like just a big charade area here. So let's show you where I'm going. So I thought my nose was starting to run. That says Sto, and I think that's where they, uh, I think that's uh, like automobile inspections. There's like a couple words that are all similar to that. Sto is like a hundred. That's the word for 100. And uh, I don't know. I'm forgetting my Russian. Sorry about that. Okay. But, uh, like I said, it's, I, I think it's a setup and the press is trying to blow this up and to make it like a big deal. And uh, I think they're talking about that they don't, they don't, uh, they don't uh, respect freedom of the press, you know, because that's something they can kind of use. They can kind of use it a little bit about from Belarus, but of course there's a, it's a lot different thing here. You know, the United States, and, and this is gonna be something I really want to, I, I hope I can actually, I can verbalize this properly. Uh, there's an old cemetery, by the way. I hope I can verbalize this properly, but, but the, the press freedom and all that is a lot different over here. And for one reason, you know, you have, and I'm going to be getting more into that as well, but you have 
uh, the power of the US dollar, which they, uh, the United States reserves the right to just print as many dollars as they want endlessly, dollars and dollars and dollars, and then they buy, they can buy anybody and they can buy anything. I was saying that yesterday, and they can buy the press, and that's what they do. They do it over here. They pay huge amounts of money. There's a lot of people that are, I guess you can also say that they are agent provocateurs here in Belarus, and there's hundreds of them. Um, and I remember this was uh, prior even to 2020, Lukashenko, he was working, and he's even said this, he was working on, on the economy. He was centering himself personally on building agriculture, and he did a tremendous job. You know, the, uh, Belarus has some of the highest quality foods in the world that they're selling, and they make money from that, even though there's not that much money really in agriculture, unless you do it in a massive way. You know, I don't know that how Belarus is, is actually doing all of these things. I'm not, I, I'm not privy to all of the details, but he was concentrating mostly on agriculture and of course the economy, and, and they make a lot of products because Belarus really did they, did, they did need help. They don't really have hardly anything for natural resources here. They have some, I think it's, uh, no, not phosphate, I think it was potassium. I think they have some potassium uh, rich minerals here and of course for fer uh, fertilizers. And uh, then they have a lot of like bottled water. They have a lot of fresh water in Belarus, you know, and a lot of that is shipped to the, was shipped at least, to the European Union. So a lot of these, these big name, uh, you know, companies that sell bottled water, a lot of that water came from Belarus. Uh, maybe still does, I don't really know. But uh, otherwise they don't have much. It's, it's a landlocked country and kind of all they can do is, uh, is, uh, you know, agriculture. And of course, it's a kind of a short growing season. It's, uh, so you got a longer, a little bit longer winter here and all that. They do have uh, a lot of good wood. They have forests and they grow oak and other, other uh, woods and things like that here. So, and there's of course some cross country skiing. There's not really any mountains so much here. Ah, so anyway, it's, it's very limited here. It's not like say the United States or even Russia or anything like that. So he was, he was working on building the economy, and a lot of that time he was distracted, and maybe some people were a little bit too lax, and the USA was moving in here, and of course, setting up groups, and they have this in a lot of countries, and uh, I think it was, uh, I talked about, I think it was to, uh, not Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, or whatever, and they have like 20 different what if it was Kazakhstan? I don't know. But they have a lot of these, these places that you can go and you can watch CNN and uh, you can be on their payroll. You get paychecks every month and you're working basically uh, as, a, as at least an information pro, uh, agent provocateur for the U.S. government. And this is, this is all, I don't know, I, I can't tell you where to get that information, but you can, you can find it yourself if you don't already know that, and you can, I think maybe you can talk to uh, somebody like Larry Johnson or Ray McGovern possibly, you know, they'll at least uh, know a lot about how this stuff works, but they have a lot of these in Belarus, and a lot of this is run through, unfortunately, Lithuania and Poland. I don't know about Latvia and Estonia, um, but it's at least those two countries, and that's like this, uh, uh, this opposition leader. You know, she's, she's actually right now in Lithuania and they're plotting, as you know, they've even announced it in the United States, they're plotting a, a more regime change attempts in Belarus. And of course, I think it's gonna be taking the place again with a lot of these protests. And uh, obviously they've announced it so Lukashenko knows about it. And I think they're gonna really put down these, uh, these demonstrations. And the US and uh, <laughs> A lot of places, as if you saw Alex Cristoforo's video from just a few days ago, you know, it's like they're going to center on whatever happens, say, for example, in Belarus and blow it completely out of proportion. Uh, but they're going to ignore places like, say, in Spain or so many countries, even Germany right now, as well as big time, big time in Paris and all sorts of other cities in France. You know, the police are just beating people to a pulp. They're out and they're just beating and they're attacking them in waves. And a lot of the police and the firefighters, of course, uh, you know, so there's even videos where firefighters are fighting with the police. But in a lot of cases, they have, a lot of them have changed sides. Too bad these, these brave people, they're gonna be losing their jobs. A lot of these policemen and firefighters that have joined the side of the protesters. Because this, this, 
the, all of this, this uh, corruption and hegemony of these, these terribly, terribly corrupt governments is just way too much. And then you're going to have, you know, I'll get into that right now. I probably just, I'm jumping around probably now in my notes, but you're, this is one of the big, big stories is, you know, you have Ursula van der Leyen. She's just now recently coming out and she's threatening. She's threatening China. She's, I, uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to try to find that, but let me, let me first end with this, uh, with this uh, part about the, the journalists or something like that. It was recently said, uh, you know, and, well, first I, I should say that I don't think I don't think that these uh, these uh, Americans are going to buy all of these uh, scare threats and tactics and stuff that's coming from the U.S. government, you know, to get out of Russia. And uh, but uh, I think it was somebody said it was in either India or China. Uh, they said to the U.S. establishment, uh, "Your monkey, your circus." So, you know, you can say that about everything that comes out of the U.S. government today, and all these things that are coming coming around, and it's it's the same as the European Union. I think. Somehow the European Union is now just, uh, it, well, it's, it's almost obvious. They're just a branch of the U.S. government just on the other side of the Atlantic. When you see what uh, happened with the pipeline and <laughs> Ursula van der Crazy, they're just repeating talking points and, and doing the bidding of their masters overseas. Makes you wonder how that ever came that way. You know, you, you can stop and look at who the master of the universe is and you can see that everything is probably directed through that guy and some of his minions. How can some, some guy just, he's got one foot in the grave, even though his son is gonna take over, how can some guy like that be in control of the world? You know, not even the richest guy in the world, even though he's up there. It's just amazing, it's just amazing. Can somebody out there please figure all this out? I don't know, without any speculation, see what the real, what the real facts are. But you know, they talk about these journalists, this guy that's, a, that's arrested now, um, this, this guy with this Russian name. And, uh, but they don't talk about this, this uh, what was this? Uh, he was like a field chief for Sputnik and they arrested and locked him up in, um, I'm not sure if that was Latvia, but well, what about him? <laughs> what about him? You know, that's a journalist too, you know? And, and he's not even accused of any kind of crime. He's trying to, they're trying to find out, well, what crime did he make? And they don't have any crime. They just locked the guy up. You know, it's a little bit different. They locked up Julian Assange as well. And they're, you know, terrible treatment of that guy for exposing the truth of the U.S. government. <laughs> you know, what, what was it? Remember that? I think the thing that really set it all off is when, uh, I think it was this uh, Chelsea Manning. At that time, she was Bradley Manning. And uh, um, I think she sent in or gave to, to WikiLeaks that, uh, that uh, video footage of U.S. soldiers, drone operators, uh, killing people in the streets, innocent people, by the way, in the streets, uh, like it was a video game, laughing and making jokes, you know? Like the one guy, he had his, I think he had his two children, he left them in the car and he went to aid some guy that a drone had shot and he was bleeding in the streets and the U.S. killed him too. And I think his daughters tried to run out of the truck or the car you know, to their daddy who just got shot by the drone and American soldiers are laughing their heads off and things like that. I mean, talk about this stuff. This is some sick stuff. I mean, I, you can, I tell you, there's even footage and I don't even want to watch it, you know, of what's going on, like, like Ukraine bombing the Donbass just some days ago. And some, some guy in his 70s and, and he, they took off both of his legs and he was still alive and he's crawling through the streets, dragging a trail of blood. And of course, uh, they took him to the hospital and they couldn't save him, you know. And he didn't even know that his legs were gone. I mean, it was, this is some really horrendous stuff and this stuff is on. But they're not going to show you that in the West for sure. I don't, I don't know. It's terrible. It's terrible for anybody to look at anyway. I didn't even want to see it. But I guess there's, there's hours and hours and hours of footage of all of this stuff. And remember, Poroshenko... You know, he joyfully said that the Ukrainian children, which, which he means the West Ukrainian children, the, you know, they will be going to school, going on to the university and have a great life walking in the sunshine while all the children in the Donbass will spend their lifetimes cowering in the basements from all the bombings that they're doing to them. This was back before Zelensky time, you know, and, and, uh, and then you, then you have to stop and start thinking of what this ideology is that is, that is that has taken hold. Anyway, 
Sorry, I got off on another tangent. No, it was your fault. No, but still, this is some sick stuff, I'm telling you. But I, I felt compelled I had to make this video today and talk about some of these other crazy things that are going on. All this stuff is just, it's nothing but ammunition for, for more to come, more to come in the future. It's odd that I'm saying all these things here while I'm walking through a graveyard. You know, terrible stuff here. A lot of these people, of course, a lot of them died in wars. So, anyway, your money, your circus. Hmm. Yeah, so the U.S. Are, and the West is saying, no, you're targeting the repression of citizens and journalists, <laughs> you know. And that, what about that guy here in Belarus, that guy uh, who, who was, they have him in uniform and records proof that this guy was working for the Azov Battalion as well. Uh, he's a Belarusian citizen and he was advocating and working and giving and making up fake news and all that to try uh, to assist uh, in the overthrow of the government of Belarus. And uh, like I said, he was he was working for the Nazis, for the Nazis in Ukraine at one time. And somehow, maybe this was even staged as well, just like this, just like this one. I'll tell you what, it's kind of odd that it's a journalist again, isn't that? You know, just like it was in Belarus at that time when this guy was coming on this, uh, um, uh, what is it, Air Ryan or Ryan, Ryanair, on Ryanair, probably from some luxury vacation in Greece or something like that, paid for by the U.S. government. And he was flying to, I believe, Lithuania. And somehow, um, I don't know if the if the, some elements in the government here made this up, probably, anyway. But anyway, I, it's not that I'm against it, because look at what they did with uh, Evo Morales when they diverted his flight and made him land and search his plane looking for, uh, what is it, Edward Snowden or something like that. But anyway, um, in Belarus, they, I, I'm not even sure about this one handsome young guy who, who worked part of the time as a journalist, and they diverted his flight, and, and he, I think he landed in Minsk, you know, Minsk Airport. There's not really much of any airports you can land any kind of a jet in anyway in Belarus. That's, that might be one of the only ones. So they, anyway, they landed in Minsk and they arrested this guy. And what happened to him? He was like, a, he's on house arrest. And I think he's, he's able to walk around everywhere he wants to go. He just can't leave the country. And, uh, and look at this guy. He was working with a Nazi organization that were killing innocent people. So, but yet uh, they're really bad to journalists here. And there might be bad to some people here, but I'll tell you what, a lot of these people, they're so, you know, they've been so indoctrinated. And as you know, there was a bombing in, um, how, well, you don't know this, but it was some years ago. I don't even know the year anymore, but they'd had a terrorist bombing in the metro here in, uh, uh, in Belarus and Minsk. And I don't know how many people died on that one. So, and I don't know if there, there, I don't think it was Ukrainian. I don't, the Ukrainians, they haven't really, really done so much stuff here in Belarus, you know? For some reason, they have a seething hatred. And I'm not talking about all of the people in Ukraine. I'm just talking about those that have been uh, indoctrinated into this hatred to hate their own brothers, you know? Which they say that I think the Northern Slavs, the Northern Slavs, I mentioned this yesterday, the, are like the Belarusians, the Belarusian language, the Ukraine's Ukrainian language, and the Russian language. And so, and they're all basically one family, and there's a lot of uh, interrelation between people, you know. And it is, they're all one blood, really. But yet, they've insensitized and indoctrinated the Ukrainians to think that they have some superior bloodline or something, that there's something better, and that uh, Russians are an inferior species and not, uh, not human beings at all. Incredible how how gullible we are as human beings. I'm not talking about just these, the dumb Ukrainians that actually, you know, believe that, which I'm not saying all Ukrainians again. I don't want to get in this thing and try to act like I hate Ukrainians or something. I just, uh, even these, these people that have been terribly indoctrinated, you know, it's, it happens to everybody. You know, sometimes you believe things, you think it's really true and it turns out it's not true. And how, that's, that's one reason why I can say this because I've, I've probably been there myself. I know I've been there myself. But you know, you try to, over time, you, you block that out and you forgot about it. So like I'm saying that they've, uh, the, the EU, they've issued a warning to China over Ukraine. This is about over Ukraine, they've issued this warning. And it's sort of like the uh, Slavic family of the Ukrainians, the Belarusians and the Russians, 
you have this same family of ideology, which is the neocons, neoliberals, and the neo-Nazis, and they're all for the same thing. And they're all related, you know. And like old gorgeous George, you know, you thought he was a neoliberal, but he before that he was a neo-Nazi, and yet he's carrying out. Uh, He's working with Victoria Newland and uh, her husband, Robert Kagan, and these people, which are the neocons. So if that isn't proof that these people are all part of the same organization, so the neoliberal Soros, who used to be a neo-Nazi, or not a neo, he was, a, he was not the neo, he was one of the real Nazis back in the old days when he, he worked for old Adolphus. So you have... <laughs> I might even get I might even get censored for this because he's the guy we're not allowed to speak about. You know, you're not allowed to criticize those who control you. You know, and guess uh, guess what? I'm wondering who controls YouTube. And if you don't see this video, then you will know for sure <laughs> who is in control of you. But wait a minute, how can you do that when you haven't seen the video? Because they're going to censor it. I'm just making some funny jokes here that aren't even funny at all. But uh, anyhow. <laughs> yes, but it's, it's all about Ukraine. So this is now, I, I, like I said, I don't know who said this, if it was Alex Cristoforo or somebody, but this is an existential threat now to this organization, this, this, uh, this, tri this triad of the Nazis and the, and the, and the neolibs and the neocons, you know? Wow, you know? And, the, and this is like all or nothing. And if they lose this, and they practically made it that way, then, then they lose, you know, and the multipolar world is going to be coming in. So you're going to have Africa, Africa, you know, that has been suppressed for all these years. Africa, how long has Africa been suppressed? It's like, you know, you, you think about even those days back in Stanley and Livingston and all of that time, uh, you know, the colonization from particularly France and Britain and the Sykes-Picot Agreement, you know, when they got together and it was exposed, believe it or not, by the Russians. Even though it was a Soviet, it was uh, Vladimir Lenin, he exposed the Sykes-Picot Agreement. Otherwise, nobody would ever know about it. It was, uh, it was this agreement, for those of you that don't know, this was uh, when France and Great Britain divided up the, the colonies of the world. You get this country, I get that country. You know, who was it? Britain got uh, Iraq and and definitely Mali was France, and, and for the most part, they've been holding a lot of these colonies to this very day, to this very day, you know? And Africa, a lot of these countries in Africa are now pushing the French out. This is, it's actually, it's, it's like, uh, yeah, it's like, again, you're talking about Ursula van der Leyen, and she was, she was really pissed off, really insensitized when she's talking about uh, this meeting between um, Vladimir Putin and uh, Xi Jinping when they were departing. You know, it was, it was a little bit grainy, it was night, and Xi Jinping said something to Vladimir Putin like, we are, you know, making change in the world that has not been seen for a hundred years, actually more than a hundred years, to be honest with you. So let me, let's, let's find out, where was I at in my notes here? Um, you have Ursula van der Leyen, she's saying that <laughs> she, was, she was using threatening language, and it makes you wonder if she's going to be using this threatening language when she's going. She is going, by the way, I think I said that. I, I don't know that anybody in the vlogs have been saying this, but they, it was originally that was Macron and, and the Prime Minister of Spain going to, going to uh, China, you know? If he's not going to come to them, they're going to go to him, you know? <laughs> the mountain and Mohammed sort of a deal, you know? Oh, don't talk about the Muslims. But anyway, <laughs> so... So they're, they're going, they're going there. This is, I tell you what, this is going to be a funny event anyway. When you see, when you see these protests going on in Paris, you know, Paris is burning in France, you know, and then you have this guy giving advice, you know, giving advice to Russia, the same guy, Macron, and to Belarus on how to handle, how to handle your society, you know, and Ursula van der Leyen, you know, saying how it's, what it, let, let, let me go back, uh, Oh, gosh, I, I should have been following my notes. If I sat down in a desk, I'd be doing this. It would, it would maybe even sound a lot better. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, here I found it. I, I wrote down that John Kirby, of course, walked that back, you know, about uh, 
Jean-Pierre and all these people telling all American citizens to get out of Russia immediately. That was the word, immediately, to get out. And then John Kirby, oh, well, we're not actually telling Americans they should leave Russia. <laughs> you know, Ursula van der Leyen, and of course, this is, as you know, this, this globalist, uh, this globalist organization of the, this triad of these three, these three main uh, ideologies, it's like saying, you do, she's saying to China, you do the way we want you to do things, or else we are going to decouple from you. And obviously, this is about economics, and uh, I think, uh, I don't know how major of a trading partner China is to, uh, to Europe and vice versa. But, you know, all of this stuff, it goes two ways. It's just like sanctions. You know, you apply sanctions and you might be the one that gets slapped in the face a lot harder than the ones you're slapping. And, um, and this is the same sort of a deal. Now they want to do sanctions against China. Um, and it's probably going to say, well, we're not going to be accepting your products anymore. We'll start sanctioning uh, uh, against this. And uh, what does that mean? There's going to be no more Sony. Uh, Sony is actually made in China, a lot of that. It's not all made in Japan, by the way. And then there's going to be DJI, and uh, they do have Huawei. They do have a lot of Huawei in Europe, even if they try to suppress that so much in the United States. I don't think Huawei is sold in any shops in the United States. Hmm. I think you'd have to get it on Amazon. I'm not, I'm not exactly positive. I haven't been to the States for, I don't know, 40 years or something. So what an American you are. <laughs> You know, I'm not anti-American, obviously. I just don't really like the way the government there and is, and I don't know. I don't live there. It's not that I'm against it that way or nothing like that. I just, I don't know. I, I had a weird feeling whenever I was in the United States. I, I don't know. I felt a lot freer in other countries. So, you know, that's just, uh, that's just my thing, you know. Yeah, but uh, anyway, they're going to de decouple, and they're. She's probably going to tell China, you know, look at what we did to Russia. Look at what we did. Their economy is in tatters. Like Alex says, Alex Christopher, in tatters, I tell you, in tatters. Look at the Russians, how they're suffering. They're suffering. Look at them. Look at their inflation. Look at, they can't heat their homes. Oh, oh wait a minute. That's us. That's us. Oh, they can't afford gas. Oh, that's us too. <laughs> oh, boy. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Their children, look at, they're making their children get sex changed. Oh, oh wait, that's us too. <laughs> they're, they're confusing their people, importing immigrants, mixing these cultures, and nobody really knows they don't have an identity anymore. Oh, oh that's us. <laughs> Homosexuality, drug addicts all over on the streets. Oh, wait, that's us too. <laughs> so I, I wonder what sort of threats old uh, van der Leyen is going to give to China. You know, maybe it's going to say, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not going to go into anything like that. So, you know, we'll show you how to protest in the streets. And I think the Chinese people are actually very happy. I think he, uh, Xi Jinping has got uh, approval ratings way up into the 90s. And I think, what is, what is Macron? Macron, who's going, also going to China, you know, to be a great example to Xi Jinping of democracy and who knows what all. <laughs> <laughs> what is his approval rating? I don't know, 23% or something. I don't know. It seems like most of these leaders in the West, I don't know if they, they barely ever get over 40% approval ratings. You know, and Putin, what is he? He's hovering around 90. Hmm. Jeez. And uh, van der Leyen, I don't know. She never even, she's never, never, even, never even been elected to anything. She's just been appointed there. You know, what are some of these bitter women... Hillary Clinton, van der Leyen, and who else? Baerbock, boy, can you imagine? She's in running. Baerbock is, is, is what is she, the, the, the Wicked Witch of the West or something? I don't know. Gosh. <laughs> yes, she says, van der Leyen says, that that speech or that little talk, those words, more uh, change than that's happened in a hundred years. She, she used the word, it's, it's most telling. She said it in English, most telling. Most telling. 
Yeah. Real change, you know? What about, what about Obama's change, you know? Gosh, you know? Xi Jinping is saying they're bringing change to the world. The same thing that Obama said, but, but uh, Obama just gave loose change, pocket change. And uh, Xi Jinping is probably going to give some real change to the world. Well, let me make sure my microphone's still there. I lost it almost yesterday, you know? Hmm. Press freedom, I was talking about that already. Hmm. How that is when you can buy, when you can buy all the journalists. You, and, and that's like I, I was saying yesterday, I don't know if I really got into that, but there was this, that, uh, that book by that journalist who was dying of cancer. Gekaufte Journalisten, I guess is what it was called. And you cannot even find it. You can't find it in Germany. I was looking all over. In downtown Frankfurt, I was looking all over. I don't know when this was written. Maybe it was, maybe it was even in the 90s, but you cannot find this book. It's, it's, it's impossible. And all it was is about uh, how these journalists are all bought and paid for by the U.S. government. You know, you have to write these, you know, not you don't have to, but if you write these stories the way with the slant that we want you to write them, then uh, you know you get some, you get some goodies. You get some gifts. You get a, a luxury vacation in the Caribbean, Saint Vincent maybe. <laughs> I don't know. You know maybe, maybe you get a, a little winter house somewhere. Get a little get get a little bit of bankroll of cash or something like that. Get some nice things. Jeez, you know. Gekauften Journalisten. He was dying of cancer. He had nothing to lose, and he was saying that as a major, major uh, uh, journalist in Germany. So that's how it works, ladies and gentlemen. You know, and then they pay people that are not really journalists, and then they, you know. And I can tell you this. I can tell you this firsthand. I'm, I've mentioned this, I think, in other, in other videos. But there are, you know, I've had. A, opportunity to meet somebody who does this over here in Belarus and he's already had people that he has activated so to speak and they're not allowed in Belarus they're kicked out and they're living in uh, Baltic states or Poland and all that and uh, he works kind of in the shadows so apparently so I can tell you firsthand that there are people that are doing this here in Belarus. So, and uh, it's already known that they do this in other countries. There's a lot of people. So this is, should be no surprise to you, to anybody out there. Anybody that they're out there that's gonna say that I'm just talking a bunch of donkey twaddle. Hmm. I've seen this before too. I've seen this before I went to Belarus. You know, and that's just part of the old plan, baby. Yes, indeed, full spectrum dominance. And uh, Alex Cristoforo is mentioning the project for a new American century lately. Also, baby, I think Jeffrey Sachs, what I was watching today, he was talking about this full spectrum dominance. I've been talking about that too in a lot of my videos. I'm glad at least a lot of this stuff is coming back again because none of this stuff has really ever gone away. This stuff is, this stuff is active. <laughs> you know, you might even just change the name a little bit from one thing to the next. You know, and then we still use this word neocon. I don't know if they call themselves the neocons any more than the Al Qaeda. They never called themselves Al Qaeda. <laughs> you know, the, the toilet. Uh, but anyway, the it's this a lot of this stuff has been going on for a long time. I think it was uh, some places. I think maybe the press was even a little bit more free back in like the 1800s or whatever. When um, I don't know if it was uh, Randolph Hearst or some of these early big time modern. Um, you know, publication owners, I think they said, the news is what we tell you it is. So the news isn't what the news is. The news is what they tell you it is. And anybody that's gone to journalism school, they all know that, um, you know, the, um, how do I say, the amount of news that occurs in the world is like a, it's like a huge volume. And what we get reported is just a tiny little spectrum of it. You know, have you noticed that whenever there's a, a train crash, just like recently, all of a sudden you hear about a lot of, a lot of other train crashes. And it's not like uh, they weren't happening anyway before, but, you know, or a plane crash. And then soon after that is another plane crash. I don't really know. It's not like, uh, like somebody's, 
doing that. There's these things always going on. I don't know, even recently about in America, there was a lot of these uh, food processing plants being destroyed by fire and who knows what all. I don't know. I don't know. These things have been happening all the time, but we, they're just not reporting them. You never know. Hmm. Van der Leyen said that China's clear goal is a systematic change of the international order with China at its center. You know, well, is that any different than, than the U.S. being in control <laughs> of, uh, you know, of what is it called, the international order with, China, with America at the center? Hmm. Well, actually, China isn't, isn't, isn't doing that. That's why it's called the multipolar world and not the unipolar world. So that's a little bit different. Ursula, sorry to burst your bubble on that one. <laughs> yes. So she's thinking that China wants to replace the loving, the very loving USA. Look at the wealth they brought to Africa. Look at all those millionaire, billionaire Africans running around with Mercedes and all that sort of thing. And, and the South Americans. Look at Venezuela. Look at that. With all that, the, the most resources, most resource rich nation in all of the Americas is, is Venezuela. And look at how rich those people are all. Are all. No, it must be Chavez that's doing it. No, Chavez is dead. Uh, Maduro, Maduro, he's the guy that's keeping everybody down, you know, by wanting to nationalize the oil companies, <laughs> like in Iran, uh, Mossadegh. But then somehow the CIA seemed to have mished in with Mossadegh and got, well, I don't know, just say that they made him resign. <laughs> what was it, 1954? 1953? I don't really know. It's been a while. Hmm. So Mossadegh, then it was Guatemala, then they went on to Chile, and actually the first, uh, uh, there was a book, little book called, it should be a big book, by now it would be a big book, it's called The CIA's Greatest Hits, and I think it started out, I don't know if that was in that book, but I believe the first real assassination, assassination was in 1976, and that was an African leader. And believe it or not, they didn't use like guns or, uh, or pff, some of the other things. They used poison. They poisoned the guy, they poisoned this African leader. So, you know, they've been, they've been working their way into Africa and doing things in Africa for a long time, you know. So, and like I'm saying, you know, they, they, they've been working on Africa much, much earlier. And then look at Haiti. Look at what's, I don't know. We, if you're to sit here and uh, you, can write, you can write a huge book on all of these uh, these things that the these agencies in the U.S. government, you know, all the way up into even beyond <laughs> things going on right now, even beyond the Nord Stream pipelines. I'm not saying the CIA did that, but uh, what do they say? There's 16 um, 16 agencies in the United States, and uh, I think there might even be more. At least there's some in the military. I've even had uh, I've even had, uh, believe it or not some contact with some of these people. I can't even remember the names, but uh, there's, a, there's a lot of things going on, and there's just departments inside of the U.S. military, you know, that uh, kind of uh, punch somebody's ticket to get them out of the real world and put them in a place like this, you know. There are people in the U.S. military that do that, too, to politicians and such, and, uh, and it's not just the Delta Force and all that. Can you imagine them threatening the real leader of the real superpower on, on, in the world? Hmm. Yeah, who is the real superpower? Is it the USA? What about China? Hmm. So are they going to actually threaten him or are they going to get down in private and get on their knees and beg for mercy from him? I, that's, that's really something. you know. Or are they going to just try to talk with China on equal terms, which would uh, be kind of a wise thing to do. But I don't even know if Xi Jinping, after what he's been experiencing and seeing in the world, I don't even know if he's going to be doing that. I don't know if he's going to be accepting them to be talking to him on equal terms. Um, I probably would not be tempted to let them do that. You know, these, uh, I don't know, cockroaches. <laughs> no. Yes, and then they're talking about the U.S. dollar, you know. Well, first, let's, let me just mention that France, isn't it odd, France is now buying liquid national uh, uh, what about, LNG, 
liquid nat natural gas, not national, natural gas uh, from China, which uh, is turned into liquid natural, natural gas by using Russian gas. <laughs> so in other words, France is using Russian gas still, just paying a lot more for it, I guess, you know, helping China out. So I guess how that's, how's that going to work when they're going to try to bankrupt China for not doing what they say? Mm. I'm coming to an end here, so bear with me, people. <laughs> yes, Saudi Arabia, as you all know, and they've already joined the Shanghai Cooperation Organization and soon to be also in the BRICS. And um, the de-dollarization, as everybody's been talking about, was supposed to start really gaining speed in 2025. But guess what? Everybody's talking. Everybody's talking about it. It's going on right now. De-dollarization. Brazil, of course, and Saudi Arabia have now agreed that they're not going to be uh, doing their bilateral transactions in dollars anymore. So that's gone. And that's probably got to be quite quite giant, a quite huge amount of money. China is a big country. Brazil is a big country. There must be a lot of money going back and forth between those two. And if it was always done in the dollar, and it's not going to be done in the dollar anymore, hmm, then what does that tell you? And another thing that I was noticing, and I don't know, you guys should even be watching the gold price and even the silver price, because I was looking uh, this morning, I was thinking, well, on that news, you should see maybe a big surge in the gold price, but the gold price did not go up. It, as a matter of fact, it went down some. But then you look at silver, you know, you know that these, these prices of these, these, um, um, these commodities are actually uh, finagled. They, they finagle with these, uh, the prices of that, the value of gold and silver and whatnot. And, but I looked at the price of silver and the silver had gone up quite a bit. The last I looked, it was about, uh, um, see, I, I judge it in a certain, um, you know, one ounce coin. I look at a certain coin from some certain country and I just, I've been, I've been looking for years, just, I've been looking at um, the Australian dollar, like, uh, or the Australian one ounce uh, uh, kangaroo dollar, you know, because that's, that's 99.9% .9 gold. And then I've just been looking at any, any kind of a one ounce coin of silver. So the gold price, what I saw in euros was 1,933. And recently it was like up to 1,000, 900 and uh, and 70 something or whatever not too long ago so the price has actually gone down however silver was at uh, it was at 29 29 something and something cents just a day or so ago and now that is 33 so that is quite a jump when you talk about silver that's quite a jump I haven't seen it at 33 for a long time so they finagled the gold price down but they forgot to mess around with silver a little bit and uh, at one point in time, if you remember, silver was up to 50 US dollars an ounce, and uh, then it was taken down, you know, to, uh, you know, quite a bit, depending on what time that was and what year. I remember it was down at one point, like 23 or something for an ounce, and I don't know. But like I said, right now it's 33, 33 US dollars for an ounce, for one ounce uh, silver coin. So, um, no, I said euros. <laughs> I, I'm, I talk about euros. I haven't had dollars for a long time. And I also saw this video. This, is, this was really telling. This was with Jeffrey Sachs, the great Jeffrey Sachs. Now that's a guy to watch. You know, he's, he's firmly based in reality and he's firmly based in justice and fairness. I love Jeffrey Sachs. When he was working, you know, between a lot of these countries, he had done a lot for Poland. He had brought the economy, you know, by making some changes in the relationship between the, the United States or the West and Poland, he had uh, been really successful in helping the Polish economy, you know, back in, uh, I don't know, in the late, late 80s, I believe. And then at the time, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, which was 1991, he was proposing a similar project for Russia at that time. And he said the U.S. flatly rejected it right away. And uh, he said he was noticing even back then what is what's going on you know isn't it good when we start trading with everybody and things like that you know he's a he's a great economist uh, jeffrey sachs so he was noticing that there's something going on that there was a he even said i guess he was saying that he saw then there was a line being drawn and uh i'm i'm in belarus right now and i should tell the belarusian people anybody who's watching this and there should be some belarusians out there 
that that line has been drawn, but, it, but uh, Belarus, you're on the other side. You're not on the side of the European Union and the US, you know, who, who are their uh, little darlings, you know, actually tools, you know, they're their pre preferred tools. You know, you're the one that the tools are going to be applied against. You are the, uh, you're the piece of wood that they're going to be pounding nails into, just like Russia. Uh, so that line was drawn on the border of Belarus, Belarus and Poland. So Poland's in, Belarus and Russia are out. Um, if I would have been there, I would have asked Jeffrey Sachs, where was Ukraine at that time? You know, obviously Ukraine was also on that side also because George Soros has been there for quite some time. And you, I know that he was in there in the 90s. So, so that's, a, that's a pet project of uh, the neocons, the neo-Nazis and the neoliberals too. So, you know, and I, like I said, it's very obvious they were all joined together. They're joined together at the hip. So they're just one and the same. And, uh, you know, but that's mostly all I want to say today. And uh, somebody wrote to me that uh, I had some views, but uh, but nobody subscribing or something. Or no, oh no, it was no likes. I had like five likes, and 33 people saw the saw my clip. You know, and it's kind of important. I don't know. A little bit more subscribers would be nice, because um, the only reason why I would like the subscribers is not to, nothing to do with any kind of money. But it was, it's just a little bit of like. Uh, credibility. If people see you only have 400 subscribers, which is where I'm at right now, say, oh, he must not be any good. I'm not going to watch this guy's videos, this Joker's videos. So um, I should start doing things like other people, you know, and um, finding other ways to friends and sending it to this person and that person who uh, I would ask, you know, to show to other people. I did that with one video, as a matter of fact, not long ago, just a couple weeks ago. And instead of my usual whatever it is. If I do a restaurant or something, go eat a, a drink a beer and have a hamburger, I only get like 60 views. <laughs> no, I could be doing that sort of stuff, but uh, I don't know. Anyway, for those of you that uh, that got any anything good from this video that I've just been making right now, uh, and you're not subscribed, you know, you can subscribe. Go ahead and subscribe. You know, if you don't want to watch it, I'll try to put the the topics of whatever I'm going to be talking about in the title and maybe in the description, of course, as well, if there's a lot, if there's too many things. And uh, you don't you don't have to watch it if it doesn't sound like anything that appeals to you. If it's about hamburgers and beer and you don't like that, you know, just, uh, you know, don't even watch it. OK, so that's it for right now. And like I say, subscribe or put a like, eh, one of the two. And I'll see you the next time. Thanks for joining me. Till then, bye.